inter introduction to democracy. What is democracy? Democracy was originate with uh from Yunani, a language uh made from the words demos and kratos. Demos was generally tied to the community classification system that Platonus introduced to Athens in 508 before century according to the setting of the ancient Yunani. Demos can also be translated as citizen or people uh, and when the Demos and Kratos are combined the, they form the, the, the word of democracy which refers to the country's people power. Instead, there are three different types of democracy which is presidential democracy, mixed democracy, and parliamentary democracy. Uh, the president serves as the boot of head of state and, and head of government in a presidential democracy. It indicates that a presidential electoral college, congress, or national assembly are used in election of the president. This implies that voters from around the nation case ballot in the congress or national assembly to elect, to elect the president via the presidential electoral college. So, some nations have prime ministers chosen by the president for those positions. So, presidential democracy and parliamentary democracy are combined, combined uh, to form for mixed democracy. Uh, historically, Germany implemented uh, this strategy after after they were defeated in World War One in 1914 to 1918. This speed, this speed, parliamentary democracy elects the head of state through the legislative branch or legislative body. The young Deputy Agong, who is elected by the council ruler as the head of state in the framework of Malaysia. The Prime Minister, who, who is the one authority in charge of overseeing government operations, uh, serves as the head of government. In this case, the development of Malaysia system appeared when the absolute monarchy changed to the parliamentary democracy and uh, uh, and constitutional monarchy during the British rule as a result of Federation of Malaya in 1948. Next, development democracy, democracy described the world meaning of democracy context in assuring that the bring of each ideological perspective that created by the, prime, the previous prime minister of Malaysia at that time. So, there are five stages of development democracy in Malaysia, which is uh, in the era of Tun Abdul Rahman, Tun Abdul Razak, Tun Hussein An, Tun Dr. Mahade, Tun Abdullah, Tun Abdullah Ahmad Badawi, and the last one but not least is Datuk Sri Najib Tun Abdul Razak. Malaysia Parliament is a sovereign legislative body that creates law that benefits the entire public. Parliamentary democracy is the best political mechanism and powerful tool for legitimizing government action. It means that the people are involved in the country's administration system. With the king serving as a symbol of the people's loyalty, the Malaysian constitution provides for a monarchy system known as a constitutional monarchy. In the pre-colonial era, the Malay kings ruled under an absolute monarchy system. When Malaya king independence in 1957, this system was officially implemented. The YBA acts in accordance with the Malaysian federal constitution and on the prime minister's advice. Since independence, Malaysia has been a parliamentary democracy. Elections are used to select the people's representative to serve in a local, state or federal government. In addition, 
to electing state legislative assembly members general election are held to choose representatives in a parliament who are thought to be capable of leading the nation. If the YDPA dissolves the parliament, a general election must be held within 60 days. As for Sabah and Sarawak, a longer period of 19 days applies, given that many of their citizens live in the remote areas. For instance, Prime Minister Ismail Sabri announced that the solution of parliament on October 10, 2022, selection and procedure outlined in the nation constitution are used to appoint people to these three bodies. Malaysia are also uses the system of expression of powers, which is intended to simplify and streamline its administrative structure. The executive body cannot intervene in the matters under the purview of a judiciary and legislative bodies. The expression of powers must be performed to avoid power domination by certain quarters. The theory of a power expression was formulated by Monster Q, who identified that the branches of an administration in a country need to be separated. That's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. I will continue with the advantages and disadvantages of democracy. Democracy is the most popular form of government in the modern world. It has several advantages. The implementation of a democratic government system is highly significant for a country that is sovereign in terms of people's freedom. One of the advantages of democracy is that people have the freedom to express themselves, to be politically active, to form association and to choose a trusted leader. A parliamentary democratic system can generate strong support for the elected leader. As we all know, the people play an important part in deciding the country's political future. As a result, the parliamentary democratic process allows the people to be competent and capable leader. People then have the right to speak, to be political, and to associate because the people and their voice influence government in a democracy. Each individual must decide their own fate. People can vote in whatever way that their morality allow. Some even allow people to avoid voting if they think it is the best way to express themselves. Every vote is a chance to express one's own point of view. Aside from that, democracy may promote self-development. Individual behavior determines not just the form of government, but the people government is considered as more effective in fostering desired attributes. Democracy influence individual to become more community-minded and to take responsibility to address the difficulty of others while inactive people become active. The assumption that the elite are more intelligent than the majority of the population has been proven by history. This is because a person's attitude is influenced by the logical mind but the educated act more irrationally. Some claim, however, that the dominant ordinary people are unduly biased and create an act widely in compared to the elite. Proponents of the com Proponents of democracy feel otherwise because people elected as representative are the best. We move to the disadvantages. Too many conflicts happen as a result of weaknesses in the implementation of Malaysia democratic system. Democracy is generally recognized as the most fair mode of government election. By definition, not everything has benefit or simply advantages. Democracy has a number of disadvantages. One of the disadvantages of democracy is that it develops two opposed streams of thought. A party will split if its members stick to their belief and do not tolerate with other. As a result, loyal supporters of the individual will fight with other supporters, dividing the community. Furthermore, democracy assists in the struggle for power among political group or party. As a result of democracy provision of political freedom, there will be a conflict and disagreement among the people. There is also a problem with the public selected leader who are unconcerned about problem resolution and do not concern about the well-being of the people because they are obsessed with their career. Beside from that, 
Corruption is also one of the negative of a democratic system. Those elected to position of responsibility may use unethical means for personal benefit and engage in corrupt behavior. While in government, they may use their position for personal benefit while ignoring public interest. As we all know, Malaysian politicians are embroiled in corruption scandal. For example, the 1MDB corruption case against Datuk Seri Najib Razak. This might give a bad name to the political party in which they are associated as well as do them harm. That's all from me. Thank you. Next, I will continue with my part which is implication of democracy. As we know, it is widely assumed that democratization, including good governance, is deeply connected to conflict resolution and prevention. The degree of democratic stability is significantly connected with per capita income and a drop in wealth in emerging countries, increasing the likelihood of democratic decline. Direct democracy is no longer relevant due to the advent of representative democracy brought about by the, by the growing population. This type of democracy has served as a model for all political systems around the world. Under Dr. Seri Anwar Ibrahim's leadership, the present government is pushing for the good governance which include components like the transparency, accountability and openness. In Southeast Asia, which is include Malaysia as well, it is generally Acknowledge that civil society organizations have struggled to get past the religious and trans institution and move beyond the opposition politics. Normally, civil society organizations provide resistance tactics, but now that the opposition opposing political parties are in power, it is important to find out how the civil society is reacting to the new political environment. Now I will talk about five stage in the development of democracy in Malaysia. The firstly is compromise and cooperation in year 1957 until 1969. A modern narrative told this really revealed the British perspective in giving freedom to Tunku Abdul Rahman regarding independence. The narrative must focus on explaining the basic element and characteristic of Malaysian democratic politics. Failure to understand the narrative may lead to a wrong perspective on how Malaysian democracy was formed. The first narrative is about Malaya will only be granted independent after all the various races in Malaysian should unite. The emergence of the narrative is also the main determinant of the emergence of political and democratic practice in Malaysia. Thus, this policy in the main determinant of the emergence are practice of identity politics in this country. Identity politics will not exist if Malaysia remain a nation state in the post-colonial era. The second narrative are the British socio-economic policy that creates systematic inequality between Malay and other people. The socio-economic policy also encouraged Tunku Abdul Rahman to form political cooperation with the three sharing among major three ethnic parties such as United Malay National Coalition Organization as AMNO. Malaysian Chinese Association as MCA and the Malaysian India Congress MIC in the three main ethnic group in our country. Third narrative is the social contract principle have influenced identity political development and activities in Malaysia. Tunku Abdul Rahman think that social contract become a mechanism that function as a check and balance against the use of identity politics at the intra and inter-party level with the aim of preserving Malaysian national identity in the federal constitution. And the lastly is the fourth narrative is consociational democracy where Consociational democracy had expanded Malaysian identity politics into a larger framework for democratic national governance that governed our nation in the post-colonial era 
This shows that it's a low identity politics in Malaysia to be controlled by national policy that maintain democratic value and a constitutional monarchy. Second stage of development democracy is compromise to control in 1970 to 1981. Tun Abdul Razak bin Datuk Hussein are also also known as the father of development was born in 11 March 1922 at Pulau Kladi, Pekan Pahang. His father was called as the rich man since of Dr. Hussein bin Muhammad Taib, in which came from the descendants of Solaresi warriors in Indonesia to initiate his business and stay in Pekan, Pahang. His mother, Hajah binti Daud, is the common people different with her husband, whom has the descendants of heroes. The biggest contribution that left by Tun Abdul Razak firstly, is firstly, Maghran, for the purpose of preventing racial riot from spreading more to the world Malaya at that time. Second, national principle. In national principle, the nation was taught to nurture the ambitions of achieving and encouraging the greater societal unity, keeping a democratic lifestyle, establishing a just society where everyone uh, may share in the nation's success in an equal and fair manner, ensuring that the many and uh, very uh, cultural traditions are treated uh, with tolerance and creating a com contemporary scientific and technological advanced civil civilization persisted uh, to uh, our generation. Third, new economic policy. New economic policy was established for preventing the poverty in among Malay and in Mamali, and we start structuring a uh, socio economy uh, between races in Malaysia. As a result, new economic policy was only achieved uh, to reducing the poverty as much as 49.3% in 1990. It's about Mahadarism in year 1981 until 2003. Among the core idea that Tun Mahathir once contributed to our country through thought in range was the first nationalism. It's an allergy and movement that promote a particular nation interest, particularly with the goal of preserving the nation's sovereignty over its country. Its concern about the collapse of the Malay economy are the origins of Malay nationalism. He has been involved with India community relation ahead of the 14th general election, obviously to gain their support through an alliance or perikatan with the Hindu right action force as known as Hindraf but also by planking specific assistance to reduce marginalists in their Harama relationship between Mahadarism and Chinese community it showed that from Malay Dalima to Chinese businessmen. The second element are Islamism where ideology for Dr. Mahadeh say that the dynamic of Islam is a perspective of thinking towards practicing good value on the condition that it does not conflict with religious teaching. In addition, Islamic scholar and mufti must know that the rule and fatwa that a public is to avoid misunderstanding caused by incorrect interpretation of Islam when involving in matter of our country administration is that that Islamic value are also universal value that are shared or recognized by all races and religions that include value, cleanliness, honesty, justice, discipline, trust, efficiency and so on.
The third element are capitalist. It's about Mahadev's view on capitalism are related to the main economic challenges in Malaysia. In years 1980, he deal with problem public sector in efficiency, heavy industrialization, and recession will in the years 1990. He faced with another recession and serviced financial market. So, the existence of his Malaysian incorporated policy can be categorized as pragmatic dirigimis, which was influenced by the development of the East Asian model. His main responsibility is to control the deep problem. The fourth element of Mahadurism are populism. Mahathir identifies as a nationalist, patriot, and champion of the people. He, re he regretted that the Berset 4 and Berset 5 rallies did not immediately force Najib and Amno BN from power as the massive demonstration with corrupt leader states. Mahathir is content with his previous populist person Persona and believe that the opposition masses are changing their society by opposing a corrupt and oppressive government. He went on to insist that the monarchy must maintain in power and constitutional position. And the lastly component of the Mahdarism is authoritarianism. Authoritarianism by advocating as value in the ideology and mind, democracy's fundamental principle, the idea of Asian principle placed emphasis on the value of societal and familial tradition that conflict with Western value. We talk about reformists and liberalists in year 2003 until 2009. Abdullah Ahmad Banawi, also known as Pakla, assumed office on 31 October 2003 with the slogan Combat the Corruption Menace. One of his plans was to treat everyone equally regardless of their gender, nationality, or religion. As head of the national administrative system, he reminded the civil servant to enhance their ability in providing a good quality administrative and management service, he said at the Finance Ministry Money Assembly, which also marked his first day in office as the new Finances Minister. Furthermore, Islam Hadari complete an all encompassing with a focus on the advancement of civilization and the economy capable of intentions Malay competitiveness to become the motivation for the Malay race's success the great legacy of the Islamic civilization Islam Hadari aims to be achieved through the acquisition of knowledge and the growth of individual in the country other than that Islam Hadari also aims to achieve two main principles such as faith and piety in Allah, just a trustworthy government, free and independent people, vigorous pursuit and mastery of knowledge, balanced and comprehensive economic development, good quality of life for the people, to protection of the right of minority group and women, cultural and moral integrity, the safeguarding of natural resources and the environment and strong defense capabilities. And the lastly is about Najib won Malaysia or Malaysia Baharu in year 2018 until now. On 3 April 2009, the Prime Minister asked the people to support him in his mission to revitalize the country to the idea of one Malaysia is people first, achieve, achievement first in Najib Moto. The main theme of Najib new administration, one Malaysia, which is based on tolerance and interracial racial trust, 
will guide all his initiative and policy as well as his vision for the economy, politic and direction of the government. Najib also introduced the eight pillar of formulation such as culture of excellence, perseverance, humility, acceptance, loyalty, meritocracy, education and integrity. Other than that, Najib also developed key performance indicator or KPI for his minister in the spirit of one Malaysian. From this KPI structure and guidelines are formulated as they are developed according to the criteria used to evaluate the Chief Secretary of the Ministry and the Director General of the Department. Najib emphasized that his administration will focus on six main areas of financial result in the medium term, is namely as preventing crime, fighting corruption, increasing access to high quality and affordable education, improve the quality of life of the poor, improve rural infrastructure, and improve public transportation. Besides that, Najib has already established the performance management and delivery unit as known as per Mandu and change it with leading the government transformation plan as GTP implementation. The GTP has actually gained more importance under the Najib administration as seen by the intensive publicity and considerable funding for the program. The GTP has identified six national key result areas or NKRA as its focus for immediate action like reducing crime, fighting corruption, improve, improving student outcome, rising living standard of low-income household, improving rural basic infrastructure, and improving urban public transport. For the last part, we move to conclusion. In conclusion, Malaysia democratic system of government is a crucial component of the nation. This is so that all aspects of the nation administration, including the election process, can be carried out in orderly, free, fair, and clean. Democracy is a type of political system in which the populace is given the opportunity to influence the enacting laws and establishing government structure. As is well known, the people or representatives who have been chosen through election create laws in a democratic government. An essential element of democracy is election. By selecting representatives to defend their rights as citizens, the people are indirectly exercising their power. However, democracy is not only about general election, but it also includes several other criteria such as involving the right to freedom of speech, the right of the people to be involved in politics, the right to freedom of association, the right to access alternative information, and the ability to create public policy according to the will of the community. Therefore, the government should provide educational opportunities related to the constitutional system of our country, Malaysia, in order to be able to provide new knowledge to the people as well as produce more knowledgeable citizens. This aims for Malaysia to be able to stand as a successful and advanced democratic country and enable this concept of democracy to continue in the future.